and welcome. Today I want to share an art journal spread in my little art journal that I made not long ago. It's made out of a vintage book and I will post a link in the description box below on how I made this journal. Now when I sometimes when I uh, make journals um, people ask me you know or mention that they would like to see me working in the journal and so I thought I would do that for this week's prompt in the mixed media emporium. I'll talk about that in a minute. I wanted to mention that the idea for this page came to me when I was sorting through some papers and I found those images, those nice vintage images from Mrs. Coggs um, and that uh, paper with the white circles. That is tracing paper and I just used a stencil with those circles and some white paint and um, that's how I made that paper. So I was just sorting through my papers and I saw those two things and that, uh, I, I, just, I don't know, I just had the idea that those would look good together. So I gathered some things. Um, you see there on the left some stencils and some uh, Tim Holtz tissue paper that I thought would make a nice background. Um, I already have, <clears throat> excuse me, I already have the book page in the background, so I was hoping some of that would show through, but I wanted to add some more of that sort of feel to the left side of my art journal spread. So I'm putting down some matte medium and I'm going to attach the tissue paper with that. So back to the Mixed Media Emporium. That's a Facebook group that I took over in January of this year. And um, each week we have a prompt and then uh, members post their projects based on those prompts. So the prompt for this week is called, is Let's Get Artie. And um, we actually have a guest artist that is, um, sharing her project for that prompt. Um, her name is Michelle and I will post a link to her video for her project in the description box below also. Now if you'd like to join the Facebook group um, I'll post a link to that as well down below and the only thing is please make sure you answer four membership questions um, very often we have to decline uh, requests because uh, some people answer one or uh, anyway less than four questions so just make sure there's four questions make sure you answer them um, and there's no problem so I'm going to um, just kind of tear off that um, tissue paper because I said before I don't want to obscure all of the uh, book page text in the background and as I often do with these um, projects I'm just kind of winging it so I just thought I would see where it would tear and just go with that. I'm planning to cover the page um, after this um, Gosh, sorry, but sometimes when I am doing the voiceover, I can't even remember what I did, but it's either gesso or white paint that I use next, so um, it's okay if the, um, the tear, you know, those tears in the background are there. They'll kind of disappear or fade into the background. So one of the reasons why I like to use a matte medium to attach and glue things in my art journals is that once... Um, that matte medium is on and dry, it allows me to mix my, or I guess like, um, I can't think of the right word now. It allows me to use my paints easier on the page. They, um, they just react better because um, if I hadn't used the matte medium, those book pages would immediately soak in the paint and the paint just wouldn't move as well as um, it would uh, with the matte medium on it. So the matte medium is kind of uh, like a protective layer on top of the book page. And I had those scraps of tissue paper, so I decided to add a couple more here and there. 
and just I was just looking at my scraps and just kind of trying to add a variety of um, pieces. And again, I'm using the matte medium to attach those. So I'm following the same process, matte medium under the tissue paper and on top of the tissue paper. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so everything's dry. I do trim that up before I start with my gesso and my paints and um, the plastic container you see on the left is the one where I keep my gesso. I usually buy it in a really large container and then I put some in that smaller container so it's easier to use. For me, I use a lot of um, gesso so it's easier for me to do it that way. Um, also, while I'm thinking of it, I'm sorry there's some glare from my overhead light on my um, glass mat. I love using my glass mat, but um, I need light. <laughs> so I sometimes I forget. I sometimes try to put a piece of paper or something over that glare to cover it up because I know it's probably annoying, but sometimes I forget and this time I forgot. But anyway, um, using some deli paper there just to protect my inside cover because it is a nicer one. Um, that I don't want to mess up too much. So that's um, the gesso that I'm using on there. And I don't want to apply it too thickly because as I said before, I do want the background to show through a little bit and I'll be using some paint on top of this. So I'm going to continue spreading the gesso over both pages and then letting that dry and I'll be back. Okay, so I decided to use a color in the background called um, Titan Buff. It's made by Golden. It's one of my favorite <laughs> favorite colors. It's just a really nice beige. And um, because I was using the, uh, so I, I'm trying to make a vintage uh, feeling art journal spread, um, I decided to use that color and I, um, spread some Titan Buff on there and then I remembered that I forgot to do my scribbles in the background which I love to do. So I just um, have a um, brown and I usually use black pencils but this time I used a brown one um, to make some scribbles in the background and then I'll go back to adding my Titan Buff uh, and just dabbing it on lightly because as you can see you can still see the background a little bit and that was my goal so I'm going to dab that on there we go and <laughs> let that dry and then I cut out a little bit of the image I'm going to continue cutting out more um, of the white background of the image but I just wanted to have a look and see how I would um, maybe place those um, elements because those are the main elements of my art journal spread and I'm making this a simple one you know some of my art journal spreads have lots of layers and are more complex but I I don't know I just had the idea to make this simple one and I really do like the way it turned out so I'm just moving that around moving that around trying to figure out where I'm going to put it and then which stencil I will use so I will give you a clue that I just ended up using that one um, it looks a little bit like a sun, but um, I don't use a sun color. So I decided where I'm going to put my um, tracing paper with my white polka dot background. And I'm using a glue stick to glue that down. Um, tracing paper gets very, very crinkly if you add any wet glue. So that's why I decided to use my glue stick. And um, I think that works fine in my art journal for many things. So I glued that down and now I'm going to use my stencil. And um, I'm still kind of 
wondering which one I should use, but um, I do use the one that looks kind of, it's like a sun or a flower. Really, it could be anything <laughs> that you want it to be. And I decided to use that blue color. I don't know why, I just looked at my paints and that's the color I decided to use. Um, and I, again, what, I'm still trying to decide. Oh, I decided, <laughs> surprise, see this, is, I'm telling you, I can't remember what I do <laughs> from one day to the next. I decided to use that one, not the sunflower <laughs> one. <laughs> oh boy. So I'm just dabbing that lightly. I'm trying to be careful um, and put it in the corner there. I don't want the whole thing on the page. And I'm going to see how that looks. So I tried to be careful, but I did get a little much there in one spot that seeped under the stencil. And that happens when you have too much paint on your sponge. So I know that and I try to be careful, but I still sometimes that happens to me. So I just blotting up some of that paint to see if maybe I can get rid of some of that blotch. But it's there and um, I'm really okay with that because um, I've said this many, many, many times. I'm not trying to be um, perfect in my stenciling. So um, usually I don't even clean off my stencils, but <laughs> I decided to clean that off because um, I was thinking about using that stencil in another part of the page, but I realized it's really large and I thought it would be too much to use it um, in other places but you can see there I'm looking at it and I decide not to but I feel like my page still it needs a little something especially in the left bottom portion and that's what I'm indicating there so um, I'm gonna cut <laughs> cut my image out further I think I'm saying okay then I decided instead of gluing down more of that tracing paper that I would just pull out my circle stencil and make some more white circles kind of flowing from the bottom left side to the top right and I thought that would unify the two pages more and just make it look a little bit nicer and you can see there at this point I have cut out the white part of the background of the focal image with the three women and this time I'm using some white paint to um, dab on my stencil. Now this is, um, well the, all of this is really very subjective but I just um, put my stencil down. I did line up one of those circles right there um, oh no, I didn't line that up. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I just wanted to flow, continue the flow of circles. So I put my stencil down where the circles on the right ended and then went from there. And it's just kind of, again, just, I'm just kind of winging it, doing a little bit at a time. I will lift my stencil to see how it looks. And I like the way that looks so far on that side. And then um, I think I'm, <laughs> hopefully I'm saying the right thing. I think I'm going to continue on the top right side next, just to kind of, um, again, let that flow up from the bottom left to the top right of the spread. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> So now I really am going to line up my circle stencil there so that my circles end up close to the right place. I want to go off the edge a little bit and I don't want to add too many circles either. And I think that's about all that I'm adding. So I think that looks pretty good. And um, no, I think I need more circles, obviously. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to overdo, isn't it? I mean, I try to be careful because I tend to overdo things a lot. So I'm just trying to be really mindful of that. But, you know, sometimes you just have to keep going. <laughs> so I'm going to add one there. Is that it? Oh, well, 
keep going. <laughs> okay. Any more? No, nope, I'm stopping. I'm trying to show some restraint. <laughs> so, um, sometimes you, I have a little edge of the um, tracing paper or any taper that I glue down. Sometimes the edges don't always glue down. You just have to add a little extra glue there. Okay, so my next step. I hope <laughs> is to glue down the um, the the focal image. There we go. So I'm just going to glue the back down again using my glue stick. And I wanted to share that in order to cut those um, parts that I'm pointing to there. Very often for me, especially in my art journal, I just cut through it oftentimes it's an arm or a leg or something like that I just cut through it to get to the part that I want to cut out and then when I glue it down it really doesn't show up um, the cut that I made you know to get to that um, interior part so that's how I like to do it and then I'm I am very careful when I apply my glue stick so that I don't tear the image because it it's easy to do that so um, if you're wondering why that little scrap is on the left side there, I finally remembered about the glare and I put that there to <laughs> get rid of that one little glare spot. So, whoops, and that little piece of paper just blew away. Um, so I'm using a paper towel to press down on my image. I don't, hopefully if I have anything messy on my hands, I don't mess up my a beautiful image. I love the way that looks honestly. And then I'm going to use some distress ink around the edges because I really like to do that. And um, I just like the way that looks, especially on a vintage piece. And then um, it kind of adds a nice little frame framing to your work. And then I have to find some uh, wording for my um, spread. I like to use words on my art journal spreads most of the time, not always, and then it's pretty much finished. So I'll be back with that. Okay, I went on the hunt for some words and I found some in a Tim Holtz um, sticker book, uh, sticker of words. I can't remember the appropriate name. <laughs> it's um, I thought really appropriate for this spread. It says we dream of sunny days and sometimes I like to add the quote or words just as is and sometimes I like to cut them apart um, for I don't know what reason I decided this time I was going to do, cut them apart and then glue them down individually. I just thought that would look better. Um, I liked the using the black background too on there because I thought it tied into the um, with the swimsuits of the women. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the arrangement of these words. Uh, so just a silly little last minute thing that I obsess over. Um, but I have my glue stick at the ready and I'm gonna glue it down in some form or fashion. And I decided this time rather quickly, instead of trying every kind of configuration, <laughs> that I'm going to glue it down right there. Now these words do have a sticky background, but I find that they need a little extra glue most of the time um, on acrylic paint. They don't always stick as well. They can fall off. So this just adds a little extra protection there. And that one seems to have <laughs> stuck on well. I hope I don't lose it at some point. Um, and there you have it. They're stuck on there. I'm finished with my spread. I, I said again, um, I really like the way it turned out. Sometimes spreads don't have to be that complicated for me. Um, and I just love the way you can see the book pages and the writing in the background. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.